Hi, welcome to Gaia County Tourism Live. I'm Caitlin Howley, the Assistant Director with the Gaia County Convention and Visitors Bureau and your host today. Um, before we jump into today's topic of the Welsh heritage of Gallia County, uh, I'd like to share an update on some of the Bureau's activities so far this summer. Uh, first up is National Travel and Tourism Week, which, ob which was observed May 7th through the 13th. The Bureau held its kickoff at our office that Monday with City Commissioner Tony Gallagher reading the official Gallia County Travel and Tourism Week pr proclamation. During that week, our 2016 Tourism Queen, Rachel Bowman, ended her reign. We wish her best of luck and thank her for her service to the GCCVB. And we also welcome Whitney Clagg, our 2017 Tourism Ambassador Scholarship recipient. The Bureau also visited South Gallia High School with a presentation on tourism. And to wrap up the week, the Bureau hosted the Cabela's King Cat Tournament and the Kids Rodeo. Uh, this year for the rodeo, we had 44 kids participating. And the placeholders for the King Cat Tournament are as follows. Rodney Harrison, Kim Bailey, and Sam Thompson, all of Eleanor, West Virginia, took first place of the tournament weighing in at 97.68 pounds, earning $3,400. Taking second place were Chris Rhodes of Scott Depot, West Virginia, and Chris Hatfield of Hurricane, West Virginia, with a total weight of 74 pounds and, er and earning $1,700, plus an additional, additional $1,000 for the big fish of the event. Chad Ord and Jeff Rausch, both of Leetart, West Virginia, took third place, weighing in at 68.4 pounds and earning $900. For more information uh, about the Cabela's uh, King Cat tournaments, you can go to www.kingcatusa.com or check out their Facebook page. Um, both sites contain new and exciting information on their events and for anglers everywhere. Cabela's will be returning to Gal Police in 2018 as well. So we're really looking forward to having them back. So today we're going to be continuing our talk of Gallia County's heritage and there are first settlers. In our last episode we heard the story of the French 500 and their harrowing journey to America. In today's episode, we will be taking a look at the Welsh heritage of Gaia County. At this time, I would like to welcome our guest, Jeannie Jindra, uh, Jeannie Jones Jindra, uh, the director of the Mad Dog Center of, for Welsh Studies. Thank you very much, Caitlin. I appreciate you having us on, and I always like to say, Dielkan Valor Yawn, thank you very much for <laughs> having us talk about the Welsh heritage. Okay. Um, so, Jeannie, you wear quite a few hats in our community. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, at the university, I'm director of the Madog Center. Uh, we have an exchange program. We have the faculty fellowship program. There are a number of things that I do here. Um, I'm on the Gallia County C CVB. CVB board, and I'm very happy to um, to participate in that way uh, because the Welsh Scenic Byway is part of uh, my responsibility and I just think it really helps me to understand um, part of Gallia County and the Welsh Scenic Byway and how we can market that together. Um, I'm also on the Welsh Heritage Museum Board of Trustees and I am on several national boards so I stay busy. Yes, you do. Oh my goodness. So I've always been uh, fascinated with the Welsh heritage of Rye Grand. Um, I'm actually a resident of the village now, officially. So um, I always, you know, I'm very curious. Um, so when the, f the Welsh first um, came to Gaia County, when was that? And do you know, can you tell us a little bit about who they were? Sure. In 1818, the first Welsh um, came here. The story is pretty interesting because it was an accidental settlement. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the the family of John Jones Tierbach, and that Tierbach is the farm, or they call it in Wales the handle, because there were so many other John Joneses. They he and his extended family of about 36 people 
um, decided that they wanted to come to America. So it would have been John Joes and his wife Eleanor and his uh, married daughters, two married daughters and their families, and his unmarried son and another unmarried daughter, and then a couple of families that were not actually related to John Jones Tierbach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was there a big reason behind their immigration? Most of the people leaving Wales at that time were leaving for better opportunities in what they called the New World. Um, I think you can say religious freedom was part of that. Um, definitely land ownership because uh, Wales is a very small country and they're a you know, very small amount of land uh, not um, owned by a lot of people. So we could say that a lot of the rich, wealthy um, English landowners owned most of the land and then the Welsh people could not own land. They, they would be leaseholders. Okay. Oh, in our, in our last episode, uh, we were talking about the French and, you know, they had some hardships coming over to America. Did the Welsh experience any issues coming over? This group did, very definitely. When they left in 1818, it was um, April the 1st, and this group went to, they left Aberaeron Harbor and they went to Liverpool, which would have been the way to go at that time. They were detained for about three weeks in Liverpool, so can you imagine your 36 family members with young children all sitting around just waiting for the ship to come? into dock and then they were on the Atlantic for um, two months and they were on a boat that was and they were steerage I'm sure uh, passengers they would have had no refrigeration so all of their food would have had to have been um, dehydrated or baked um, they baked bread on um, the deck um, I think it was a pretty rough crossing I know that the daughter of Mary Evans, um, she was uh, just a baby at the time, became very ill and died. And she, of course, was buried at sea. So, yes, Caitlin, they had a pretty rough time coming. Wow. Okay. So, they've arrived to America. What was the journey like for them to get to Gallia County? Well, on July the 1st, they arrived in Baltimore Harbor, which was, again, the path of immigration at the time. And from Baltimore over to Pittsburgh, they purchased wagons, and two, two wagons and two teams of horses. And they packed all their belongings and their children rode, and then the adults walked. And they would have gone over the Allegheny Mountains to Pittsburgh, and they would have stopped there. Now, in Pittsburgh, they probably, uh, it's not well documented, but they probably sold the horses and um, either sold the wagons or took the wagons apart and made flat boats. And that was how they came down the Ohio River. They loaded all their belongings on a flat boat, and there was really no uh, captain. The men of the party would steer with long poles. Wow. So it was a pretty harrowing journey, I'm sure. The Ohio River not being what it is today. It's right. very shallow in places. So um, again, I think you have to determine that these people were determined to um, get where they wanted to go. Okay, so um, they arrived to the French settlement um, mm -hmm. and they weren't planning on staying there, right? No, they were not planning on staying. They initially, w w they set out to go to Patty's Run, which is, a little settlement previously settled by the Welsh near um, Cincinnati. Today it's called Shandon. It's southwest of okay. Cincinnati. And they were going to, to join that group that had previously settled there. But um, here's where the accidental story comes in. Would you like to hear the story? Yes, I love this story. <laughs> okay. The accidental settlement of the 18 Welsh in Gallia County um, starts when they put in at Galpolis Harbor and they were met and welcomed by the French because the French probably realized that these were, I don't know how they communicated, French, maybe a little English in there and Welsh, but somehow they communicated and they welcomed this party and um, put them up for the night. And they, um, during the night, there was um, a violent storm that is documented. And when they woke up in the morning, their flatboats were both gone. And I'm sure that the men of the party were feeling that they had lost everything. However, they never left here because we're not sure if it was 
the uh, French who convinced them that they should stay, or if it was the women of the party that, that said, we're not stepping foot back on the boat. They never left Gallia County. Yeah, I, I want to believe that the women cut the ropes and just sent them down. That's, that's what I want to believe. Do you have any, which do you prefer? Well, which of course, think? <laughs> I think it was the women of the party. And I have, I've read documentation in um, a little booklet called The Story of the Welsh Pioneers by one of the grandsons, Virgil Evans. And he said that his grandmother, Mary Evans, was the leader of the revolt. Oh my gosh, that's so. awesome. Okay, so they're here. They're they're not. They've decided they're going to stay. What what was life for them after that? How where did they go? You have to think that they probably must have stayed with the French for some time, or they must have stayed near the the French settlement, uh, because the land at the time was pretty unbroken forest as you get in inland. Um, I think what happened first of all was they looked around the Ohio River and they decided it was flat and there was too much of a chance of malaria from mosquitoes. So they discounted buying any land there, um, but they heard of land that was more toward Rio Grande and Centerville. But before they bought that land, John Jones actually walked from here to Radnor, Ohio, which is uh, above Columbus just because there was another Welsh settlement there and he had heard that the land was um, available. He didn't like what he saw. He walked back. They didn't have horses then. Mm -hmm. And then they made the decision to buy land here. Land was being released from the government and it was available for $1.24 an acre. So they bought land between Rio Grande and Centerville. Oh, wow. Okay, so did all of the families that originally came over in that group stay in the Gaia County area? Well, most of them did. However, um, we know from documentation that William Williams and Thomas Evans, who were really not related to John Jones Tierbox family, they stayed from 1818 until 1822, and then they moved to Delaware County. Um, Again, there probably was another Welsh settlement there, but they they were sort of on the, they never settled in Gallia County even near the John Jones family. They sort of settled off to themselves. So I don't think they were outcasts, but I think that they just really had no reason to stay here. And again, they were looking for better opportunities. Okay, wow. Well, we're gonna take a short break and um, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Gaia County Tourism Live. I'm Caitlin Halley here with uh, Jeannie Jones Gendra, and we are talking today about the Welsh settlers who came to Gaia County. Um, so, I guess another question I have is um, so, once the original family came, uh, how did more people follow? Did more families f come after them? After Not them? for about 12 years. The, the Welsh that came in 1818 to this area, they pretty much set about the task of living. They, they built cabins and they cleared land and they, they just were alone for about 12 years. There's no other documentation of anybody even visiting um, until later. Um, and about 12 years later, Reverend Edward Jones came. He, he, came, he was in Cincinnati. He was a Welsh minister, and he came down because the people in Patty's Run had heard him, had heard them talking about the 1818 settlement. So he came and preached, and can you imagine they were hearing Welsh sermons for the first time in 12 years? And, you know, he went back to Wales, and it was the custom at the time for Welsh ministers to travel around America to Welsh settlements and they would go back to Wales and they would write travel logs or travel pamphlets. And Reverend Edward Jones wrote The American Traveler. And he designated Gallia and Jackson counties as the best place to settle in Ohio. So wow. after that, we have um, quite an influx of Welsh. Wow, okay. So um, you're very uh, active in the Welsh Scenic Byway. Can you tell us a little bit about that? 
Well, uh, the, the Welsh Byway was designated in the late 1990s, uh, one, actually one of the first uh, byways to be designated through the Ohio Scenic Byways program. And the Maddox Center is responsible for the Welsh Scenic Byway. And it, the sites on the byway include a lot of the, the chapels, the churches, the cemeteries that were built by the, the early Welsh, uh, the iron furnaces, and anything that was, was was built by a Welsh um, or Welsh American. Um, it, we, we like to have it on the byway. It's 64 miles um, that goes from the Ohio River to Jackson County um, on Route 35, but then it also loops through the countryside of Rio Grande and through the back roads, Route 233. Okay. And it's very pastoral. It's, a, it's just a beautiful heritage byway. And a lot of the people that have Welsh ancestors buried in the cemeteries like to go on the tour. Yeah, I believe we have a picture of Tinrose Cemetery. We have that, uh, which is a location on the Welsh Scenic Byway. Um, I've been there several times myself, and um, it's a really beautiful place. Tinrose Chapel um, was actually a congregational chapel and it was built in the early 1840s and the, the cemetery there is one of the most beautiful and I think what people like about Tin Rose is the original wooden or, or log chapel is still there it was moved to uh, across the road and then they constructed a new chapel when they needed more room but um, it's fascinating to see inside it's very tiny and you can't imagine how people would congregate there to have chapel services. Right, right. And um, the Maddog Center is also on that, correct? The Maddog Center is on the Welsh Scenic Byway. Um, the, actually, the house itself, the center, um, the University of Rio Grande um, is on, the Greer Museum, uh, Bob Evans Farm is on the byway. Um, <coughs> excuse me, there are so many places because Bob Evans was Welsh um, we wanted to designate anything that had um, a Welsh heritage as part of the byway. Mm -hmm. So if someone is going on the byway and they stopped into the center, what kind of resources and things that they can get there? Well, first of all, on our um, website, on Madog Center website, rio.edu slash Madog, there is a story map that is just fantastic. It's downloadable, and you can download it with uh, pop-ups that give you information on the history of all the sites on the byway. We in the center have printed maps, uh, we have a brochure, and I like to talk to people myself if possible because I, if I find out what cemetery or church they're interested in, I might be able to give them more history on that particular church. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, I, I was doing some research before this, and um, you can purchase some items at the center, correct? You can, you can. We have Welsh Heritage Cookbook. Uh, we have uh, the story of the Welsh pioneers, which is actually the, the primary resource um, written by Virgil Evans that tells about his grandparents and what it was like to actually live back in 1820s. We have some of Robert Irvin's books. He was, he's a Jackson historian. Um, we have the history of the churches in Jackson and Gallia County, just anything that would have to do with um, Welsh and the churches and the settlements. Okay. Uh, does the center have any upcoming events? That well, the center actually ha does not have any events. We have two students going to um, Wales in the fall to study, but the Welsh Museum has a, a Gamanva September the 24th, and it will be at the Welsh Museum. It's, it was the old Welsh Congregational Church, and it is the Sunday, um, the last Sunday in September, and it starts at 10.30 in the morning, and then we have a nice picnic lunch, and then one o'clock in the afternoon. And it would, it's, it's the singing of Welsh hymns, it's um, Welsh preaching, and it's just a, a good time of fellowship. Okay, okay. Um, the Matt Elk Center, um, oh, this is Cardiganshire, correct? Cardiganshire. Sure, oh, we talked about this beforehand. <laughs> oh, I knew I was gonna do that. You, you say it like all the Americans do. I know. Do. Um, so this is the, original 
Parish. Okay. This is where most of the people that settled in Gallia and Jackson counties that came from Wales came from Cardiganshire because this is where the 1818 Welsh came from. And then when word got back of how wonderful it was here, then a lot of friends and neighbors, of course, would decide to go over. So, of course, we have people that came from other areas of Wales, but mainly um, Cardiganshire is where the majority, it's the parish that, the, or the county that the majority of the immigrants came from. Okay, now when they came over, um, like I said, when I was doing some research, did they stay at, I'm gonna say it right this time, Little Cardiganshire, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what, can you tell me about that? What the, what the phrase means? Yeah. Well, we became known as Little Cardiganshire because it was just such a great population of Welsh that came over here. I think that their um, people would say in Wales, um, all my neighbors went over to Little Cardiganshire or Little Wales because it, it was just like Wales. It looks like Wales. If you go out Route 279 on the Welsh Scenic Byway, you'll find that if you look uh, pictures of Wales, the topography, it's just identical. Wow, that's that's really cool. It's not something that you think about, uh, but it's really cool to, to have the the center here and you're having that exposure to that culture because it's not necessarily something that you might think of. And it's, you know, I think we're all very proud to have that culture and heritage here <laughs> in the village. Um, I think it's really cool. I love seeing the Welsh dragon everywhere. So It is everywhere. It is. <laughs> we love our red dragon of Wales. Um, so uh, one cool thing, if you're interested in checking out the center, is the My Dog Center is on the 2017 County Passport Challenge. And we've talked about that in the past um, episodes. And for those of you who are not aware, the Passport Challenge are fun and free activities that encourages visitors and residents of Gallia County to check out some of Gallia's favorite attractions, historical sites, and local businesses. And the Passport Challenge is organized by the GCCVB. And you guys have been on the Passport Challenge for the past two years. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how it's been going this year? I have seen an increase in families coming in the center this year. It's always so much fun for me to be involved in this uh, passport challenge because I like to talk about whales and I like to talk about the flag. And when families come in, that's the first thing that the small children see is the red dragon on the flag with the green and white background. And then it gives me a chance to talk about a little bit about Wales and why we're here. So I've just really, I'm excited about it. And I think, I, I just think it's an educational opportunity. Who knows, those young children might end up, end up coming to school here and becoming involved with some of our Welsh activities. Yep. And how can someone get involved into the activities? Well, we basically, um, we have a Welsh society. It's really run through the, the um, Welsh Amer American Heritage Museum, which is in Jackson County. But we have all these events. I think just by contacting us at the Maddox Center for Welsh Studies uh, or going online, you can email me at Welsh dot rio dot edu welsh at rio dot edu and you know i'll give you information on what will be going on now i would like to mention in 2018 we'll be having the 200th anniversary of the immigration here so one thing we'd like to do is take a large group of people from here to wales because they're having many activities there and reenactments so you can get information about that celebration. It will be the end of June in 2018 by contacting me. Wow, that's, that, that's very cool. And um, so if you're interested or want some more information, please contact Jeannie and, um, and find that information out. You know, it's, you know, we have such a unique opportunity here um, that you shouldn't pass up. And even if you're just interested and you just want to learn a little bit or just check it out, um, feel free to check them out. And um, you can always contact the Visitor Center for any of their information. We also have the Welsh Scenic Byway Tours. Uh, we have that information at our office as well. Um, 
And as we mentioned before, um, the Passport Challenge, they are location on there. And you can get your uh, passport at www.visitgalia.com. They are on the 2017 County Passport Challenge. And you can also take the City Passport Challenge. And for everyone who completes uh, one of the challenges, they receive a bag and you're entered into winning one of our really cool fun drawing prizes. Um, if you complete both a city and a county, you're entered twice. Um, our prizes at the end of June are Columbus Zoo and aquarium tickets, and we have one Boardroom 46 workshop available, up for grabs. So make sure you get your passports, get your stamps, take your selfies, and we will get that um, get you entered in, and you will get your prize bag filled with goodies, all donated from local businesses, and we appreciate them. Boardroom 46, Colony Club, and French City Academy uh, sponsored our bags. We appreciate them and thank them. Um, and if you have any questions about events going on in Gaia County, please give us a call. Thank you. Have a great day.